Today is Friday of the 29th week in Ordinary Time. When you see a cloud rising in the west, you say that it's going to rain, and so it does. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. Why do you not know how to interpret the present time? Jesus asks. Good question. Why do we not know? Maybe because the present time is so confusing. Can we make conclusive statements about our political life, our church life, our cultural life, or about those close to us, family, friends, and co-workers? Sometimes yes, sometimes no, especially for family and friends whom we know best. We can even be challenged trying to understand our own motivations and behavior. For I do not do the good I want, St. Paul says, but I do the evil I do not want. The mystery of our own choices, St. Paul is saying, can range from simple things we might or might not do for the sake of our physical health, to financial choices we make or don't make out of a desire for luxury or repute, to much more serious things, how we treat difficult family members, or what we do or fail to do for people in need. The mystery I find hardest to bear, though, is the really grand forms of evil, as in Yemen, for example. Read an article in the October 11 issue of the New Yorker magazine about a decaying supertanker off the coast of Yemen that threatens the region with a massive oil spill if the ship and its contents are not attended to. The ship, corroded as it is, offers rebel Houthi tribe members a mode of protection around the port city of Hodeidah, northern Yemen's only major port, and it offers them a playing card in international religious politics. I feel a helpless concern for Yemen, having lived there for two years, my first two years as a Catholic. I left June, I left Yemen in June 1990, taking with me the photo montage that you see behind me, prepared for me by the members of my office. Two months later, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait, the first of a series of catastrophes that have killed the innocent more often than the guilty. Who has the wisdom to understand it all, much less find some resolution? Jesus asks us to judge what is right, and then, and this is the hard part, to make peace before things become worse. Make an effort to settle the matter with your opponent, Jesus says in the Gospel. Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the constable, who will throw you in prison, where you will stay until you have paid the last penny. Make an effort to control your opponent, the pandemic. Otherwise, the pandemic will disrupt your economy, further divide your already divided people, corrupt your political process, and wound and kill the gullible and credulous. We are still in this prison. More than 700,000 Americans are dead, and we still have not paid the last penny. So, what do we do? The psalm says, Lord, teach me your wisdom, for in your wisdom I trust. You are good and bountiful. Let your kindness comfort me. Let your compassion come to me that I may live. Better not to ask for a resolution to these problems. There really isn't one. Rather, ask for some peace of mind to be able to live in peacefulness and from that place to do what we can, little as that might be. It seems so little, but perhaps it is enough today that you pray with me for the people of Yemen and others around the world and for our country too, as we stand on the side of right and justice. <laughs>